Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we will build a React portfolio website from scratch. We will use a Framer Motion library to add some cool animations, React Router version 6 to route different components and React Bootstrap for the CSS. Let me show you the demo that we are going to build in this video. So this is the website that we are going to build. Uh, we see that this is the home page. Uh, we have a brand as the page Malvia and we have the menu items, home, project, services, about and contract. So currently we are on the home page. And if I refresh on this page, you will see that we have a very cool animation for the text. Now, if I go to the project, then you will see that we have a different kind of an animation on the cards. And if I hover on each of the card, then we see a very smooth transition. And if I go to the services, uh, it's similar, but if you see then, the animation on the services is a little bit different so it will have an opacity and then it comes up then we have the same transition effect and when we go to the about uh, you will see that it's simple uh, content page but when I scroll then you will see that there is a progress bar white color progress bar will progress as soon as I scroll my page so this is also being achieved with the help of the framer motion and in the end if we go to the contact then we see that we have a contacts page uh, with the, some animation so this is what we are going to build and we will learn about the framer motion in this video you can also use the timestamp to jump to any topic directly so if this sounds interesting then stick around also don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one so let's get started All right, guys, so today's video is sponsored by Arthur K, a React developer who just released an online course, Intro to Hacking Web Application. And it will teach you a variety of concepts and tools, enabling you to hack your way into vulnerable web applications built with modern JavaScript frameworks like React, Angular and more. So I talk a lot about building web applications on this channel, but something we don't often talk about is cybersecurity and keeping our web applications safe from hackers. The best part of this course is that it provides you with a deep understanding of common attacks and then prepare you to use the knowledge to protect your own web application. I thought it's really cool to blend the offensive and the defensive security concept. Let's take an example. I didn't know how easy it can be to execute a cross-site scripting attack in a React application. The course has some great real-world advice and teaches you to think like a hacker. You can use the coupon code the page Malvia and get 20% off instantly. I will put the code and the link of the course in the description of the video so that you can check out later on. All right, guys, so I have my Visual Studio code open and I have already created a folder and I named it as a React portfolio website. Now we are going to bootstrap our React application. So what I will do is I'm going to go to the terminal and inside the terminal, I'm going to have npx create React app and I'm going to have a dot so this is going to bootstrap my react application in my current folder so we will just wait for it all right so my application is bootstrapped and now let's run it so i'm going to have an npm start and this is going to start my application on the local environment so i'm going to just have an yes because i have an application already running on an port number 3000 so here we have the react application now what we have to do is uh, we have to use the react uh, bootstrap to have our CSS and then we also need a React Router Dome version 6 for routing. So let's install that. So I'm going to go to a new terminal and I will have that npm install React Router Dome. I will also have the React Bootstrap. So if we can go here and we can see that how we can install the React Bootstrap. So I'm just going to add the React Bootstrap and bootstrap so i will come back here i will add it all right and then i'm going to hit enter so this is going to install our react router dome version 6 and react bootstrap all right so we already have it let's go to the package json and let's verify if we go to the package json then you will see that we have the bootstrap and we also have the react bootstrap and for the React Router Dome, we have the React Router Dome version 6. We are also going to make use of a Framer Motion for the animations. So let's install the Framer Motion as well. So I will go to the Framer Motion official documentation. So this is the official documentation of the Framer Motion. And if we want to install it, we can simply use the npm install Framer 
hyphen motion and i will hit enter so this is going to install the framer motion and then we can later on use it to do the cool animations so if we see here then we have the framer motion as well all right so we have done all the installation of the dependencies that we will need to build the portfolio website now i will go to the source folder and first thing i will do is i'm going to create a folder with pages and that will contain all the pages on my website so inside the pages what i will do is i'm going to create a first component as a home dot JS. So I'm using a React code snippet that will give me a component with the shortcuts. So I'm going to have the RSC and this is going to give me a function component. Uh, I will just have the home here. All right. The next component which I want to create is the projects. So I'm going to have the projects.js. All right. I'm going to have the RSC and then I'm going to have here projects. Let's create another component and that will be services so i'm going to have the services.js and i'm going to type rsc all right i will just have the services here for now all right then i'm going to create an about so i will have the about.js and here i will have the rsc and i will change this to and i will add about here all right and the last page i need is the contact so let me have a contact.js and i'm going to use the rsc and i will have a contact here all right so now we have created all the five pages which we wanted and now let's do the routing so i will go to my app component and inside the app component i'm going to remove everything i don't want it so i'm going to remove this all right i don't want it and here what i will do is uh, i'm using a bootstrap classes so for the bootstrap classes what we have to do is first we need the bootstrap css so i will go to my index.html and here i'm going to add the css file so let's go here and i'm going to add the bootstrap css so this is the css file i'm going to add so i will copy this and i'm simply going to add it here all right and the remaining css uh, some of the custom css which will not be the focus of the video so for that i have already added in my app.css which i'm going to use so if i write any code and you see some styling so you don't need to worry about it you will get this app.css in my github repository so all right so now what we will do is let's close this as well i'm going to use a container component so let me have a container component and this container will be coming from the bootstrap then i'm going to have my routes so let's import the so i'm going to remove this logo we don't want it and we only need the app.css all right then i will have the import and here what i'm going to import is i'm going to import the browser router so let's have the browser router as router i will also need the routes and i will need the route all right then i'm going to add the router here inside the router i'm going to have the routes since we are using the version 6 so switch has been replaced with the routes all right and then i'm going to define my individual route so individual route will be the route i will give the path as slash and to the slash i want to have an element which will be my component which i want to load so here i will have the home component so let me add the home component all right so it's auto imported and now i'm going to copy this for all the other routes so i will copy this i will have the routes and for the projects i need to have a projects here let's import the project it's auto imported then for the services i will have the services and i'm going to change this to services then for the about so let's have the about here and this will become about and the last one is the contact so i'm going to have the contact and this will be changed to contact so now i have all the routes and now let's give a try what we see on the screen so i will go to the here and if i refresh it then i see a home then let's go to the services then we see the services if we go to the about then we see the about that means our react routing is working fine all right so the next step what i will do is uh, i need a header so let's create a header so i'm going to go here source and here i'm going to create a components folder so let me have the components here all right and in the components folder i'm going to create a component which will be a header.js all right i made a mistake so let me rename it okay and now let's create a component so here i have my function component for the header and then what i have to do is i'm going to create a nav bar with the help of the react bootstrap so if you want to see the code you can go here and you can simply type the nav bar 
and you're going to find all the navbar code from the bootstrap documentation so i'm going to have a class name and i will have a class name of header all right inside that i'm going to have the navbar and i will have the expand so these all props and classes we will get it from the react bootstrap so you can check the documentation for details all right and then in the navbar i want to have a container all right inside the container i will have a navbar dot brand so i will have the brand as the page malvia all right then in the brand i will also have a navbar toggle and this navbar toggle will help me uh, whenever i have a responsive design for the smaller screens the navbar toggle will be changed into the hamburger menu all right so that's why i have a navbar toggle and then i have a navbar collapse so i will have a navbar collapse and i'm going to give a class name here as justify content in the end because i want all my menus to be on the end on the right hand side so that's why i'm adding it here all right inside that i'm going to have the nav and i will give a class name to the nav as margin left as ml auto which is margin left auto all right and then we can create now all the links let's create first link uh, i'm going to use the nav link all right and inside this nav link what i will do so this nav link is actually coming from the react router dome uh, in order to have the navigation links and for the nav link i will have a two prop and this two prop i will pass the path of my home page whenever i click on the home all right and I will also need to have an active state whenever I click on the home menu. All right, and this will go to the home. Okay, then let's copy this and let's add for all the others. So I'm going to have projects, services, about, contact. All right, now I will just change here as well. This will become projects services about and this will become contact all right i have that and now what we have to do is now let's use this header in our app component so i'm going to go to my app.js and inside this uh, app component i will use it under the router so i'm going to have the header here all right so header is not auto imported so let's go and do again i'm going to have the header all right now it's auto imported i will save it and now let's go and check so if i go back here and i see that we have the the menus home project services about and contact so if i click on the home i will go to the home if i click on the projects i will go to the projects services about and then contact all right but see that we have a problem with the css so let's add a nav link class on the nav links so i'm going to have a class name and i will give the class name as nav link all right so i'm going to copy and i'm going to add on all so i'm going to have it here let's add it here here and here all right and now if we go then we see that we have the nav links but we see that we have a problem with the contact so on hover of the contact there is an issue so let's go back and let's see here this is the nav link we have two contact class name and then we have the contact all right and this is because on the contact we have the we are active on the contact so that's why we see here but we can change the css so let's go and let's have a additional css what we want is whenever we are on the active uh, route then in that case we can change the color so what i will do is i'm going to have let active style and i'm going to change the css so i'm going to give a color of white so let's have a white color whenever we have an active link all right so i'm going to add it here all right and now we can use this active so let's go and let's have the style so i'm going to go here i will have the style all right so here now i can give the style so in the nav link we already have from the react router dome we get a flag of is active so what i will do is i'm going to have the is active then in that case I will have the is active if it's true then I want the active style and if it false then I need to have an undefined all right so I will change this to colon all right and now we can use this on all the routes so let me have here I will have here here and here all right and now if we go back then we see we are on the home page if i click on the projects then projects will be active if we click on the services services will be active about and contact all right so we have done this now what we see is when we click on the home or the projects we don't see anything we don't see the content of the home or the projects and that is because our header is fixed so if we go and check here then we have used the position fix on the top that's why we don't see it so what we can do is uh, now let's go and let's write the home page first 
So I'm going to go my home component. So let's go to the pages and I will go to the home component. All right. And in the home component, what I will do is I'm going to have a class name of home. All right. And then I'm going to have a div and here I'm going to give a class name of name. All right. And inside that I'm going to give a the page malvia all right and then i will also have a description so i will have another div and i'm going to give a name as class name description and there i will give the full stack developer and youtube teacher based in poland oops based in poland all right i will save it i misspelled youtube all right i will save it and now let's go and check so if i go to the home we can see that we have the content all right but i want to change the font color of some text so i'm going to have a font here all right and inside the font tag i'm going to have the malvia i will save it and here also for the full stack i will change the font all right i will cut it i will add it here and then i also need it here so i'm going to add it here as well so i will have the font all right i will save it and now let's go and now see so we have the home now let's go and work on the project so first we are going to build the complete website and then we are going to add the animations on each of the page so now let's go to the projects and in the projects what we will do is uh, let's go here and i'm going to go to the projects and in the projects uh, i'm going to have my project list so i'm going to create a dummy content so let's have a constant i will have the project list and this will be an array so i'm going to have an array and then i'm just going to add the data here all right so the first will be i have the id of one all right i will have the name of my project marketing site design and build all right and then i will also need to have an image for my project so i'm going to have an image url and i will have to import some images so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a folder here so let's create a folder and i'm going to have the images folder so i'm going to have some images so let me paste some images here all right so now i have two images and now we can uh, actually import the images so let me import both the images so i'm going to do an import project one from dot dot slash images slash uh, this will be project one dot jpg all right I will simply going to do a copy paste. Let me have a copy paste. This is the another image, the second image, and I'm going to change this to two. All right, we have both the images. I'm going to copy and I'm going to add the image here. Oops, uh, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to have the image here. All right, so we have the first record and similar way we have all the other records. So I'm just going to do a copy paste of the records. All right, so now I have all the six projects and now what I have to do is I want to list down the projects. All right, now let's do the JSX part. So I'm going to give a class name and I will have the class name of projects. All right, and inside that I'm going to have an H2 tag, which will be a header for this. So I'm going to have the projects here. All right, and then I'm going to have a div with a class name of wrapper and I'm going to list all my projects here. So let's have the project list dot. I'm going to apply a map and that is going to give me an individual item and I'm going to list all the projects. All right. And then what I have to do is I have to return whatever I have in this in this map. So I'm going to return the JSX. All right. Let me cut this and let me have it. Here. all right and now in this div what i want to do is uh, i'm going to create a card so i already have the react bootstrap so i'm going to use the card component from that all right inside the card i'm going to have the card dot image card dot image so let me have the image i'm going to have the variant of top and you will find all these classes uh, from your react bootstrap documentation all right i'm going to add the image here then i'm going to have the card dot body so let me have the body so i'm going to have the body all right inside the body i will have the card dot title all right and then inside the card dot title let's have the item dot name all right for the source we have the item dot image url so we i'm not doing anything fancy here it's all available we are just trying to add everything all right so we have it and then what we will do is now let's go and check so we see that we already have it uh, all the projects and it's already responsive okay so we have that and now let's go and do the services as well so services will be very similar to projects uh, we are not having much information there so let's go to the services 
I'm going to go to the services and inside the services, uh, let me have the sample data of the service list. So I'm just going to do a simple copy paste of the data. All right. We have the information of the services. And then what we will do is we will import the same images which we have in the projects. So for the sake of the development, I'm not changing the images. I'm just having the same images. All right. A, a very similar JSX we will have in the services as well. So what I will do is uh, I'm going to have a class name of services all right and then i'm going to have an h2 tag so let me have an h2 tag which will be a services then we need to list down the services so i'm going to have a div with the class name of wrapper all right and then let's have the service list so i'm going to have the service list dot map item so we have the individual item and then we have an arrow function all right we need to return a jsx here so let's have it and i'm going to create a div all right and inside the div we are going to have have a very similar card so what i will do is i'm just going to do a copy paste so that we can save some time all right so this is the div i'm going to copy this and i'm going to add the div here so let me add it here all right i will save it we don't have the card so let's import the card so i have a card will be coming from the bootstrap all right let's go and let's check so if we go to the services we have the services we have the projects and we also have the home all right for the about we don't have much information it's just a dummy a uh, lot of some text that we are going to add so let's go to the about and in the about uh, i'm just going to add a lorem ipsum text so let me do a copy paste of that so i'm going to do a copy and then i'm going to add the text here all right i'm going to change this and i'm going to add it here and i will save it and let's go and check then we also have the text in the about all right now we have everything here now last thing is the contact and we are going to add the contact as well and once we add the contact component as well then we are going to start with the framer motion which will have some cool animations which we saw in our demo so let's go and let's complete the contact as well so i will go to the contact all right and inside the contact uh, i will have the div so let me have so i already have a div i'm going to change this to a class name of contact all right then i will have an h2 tag that will be the header of this and this will become contact all right i will save it and then what we have to do is uh, i will use the row component of bootstrap and inside the row i'm going to have the call component all right i'm going to have two columns so i will copy and i will add the other column as well all right and then i'm going to create a form so let's quickly create a form so i'm going to have a div with a class name of contact form all right i have already created a lot of times uh react bootstrap a contact form in my previous videos so you don't need to worry if you don't know how to create you can simply go to the documentation and everything is available here so if we go to the forms then you will see how we can create the contact form all right so i'm simply going to uh, write the jsx quickly all right we are going to have a form and then i'm going to have a on submit which will have a handle submit so let me have the handle submit all right and then in that the form i will have the form group so let me have the form group i will have the class name of margin bottom three and then i'm going to have the control and then i will have the control id and i will name it as a validation custom 01 all right then i will have the form label so let me have the form label and name will, will be the name and then we need to have a form control so let me have a form control and in the form control i'm going to have the required then i'm going to add the type will be the text and then let's have a placeholder so let me have a placeholder and the placeholder would be name all right so we have it and then now we also need to import the row and the column all right let's create the handle submit function so i'm going to create a handle submit and i'm not going to write any logic there so i mean that is not the part of this uh, video so i'm going to have the event this will be an arrow function all right so we have it and now what we can do is we can simply going to do a copy paste for the email and the message so i'm going to have a form group i will just copy it i will add it here and this can be changed to if we do the validation then we can change this to custom validation 2 i will change this to email this will again become email and the placeholder will become email and the last one is i need for a message also a user should be able to type a message in the contact form so i will change this to message this will now become a 
I need a text area for the message. So what I will do is uh, I will have the required, I will have the as and inside the as attribute, I'm going to give the text area. All right. So we have the text area. Uh, let's have a placeholder and for the placeholder we can have the message okay so we have the form and now we just need the button so i'm going to have a button this is also a bootstrap component so let me have a button uh, i will have the type of the button as submit and then we can have the submit form all right now let's go and let's check so if i go back here then we see that we have the contact form and we also need some information about uh, contacting uh, on the right hand side so let's add that as well so i have an another column and inside the other column what we will do is uh, i'm going to have a div so let me add a div all right i'm going to give a class name to the div as contact data all right then i'm going to have a paragraph tag all right and in this paragraph tag uh, i will simply add some text so let me call copy the text and let me add it here all right now let's go and check so it's simple the information about me so i have added some information and then i also want to add my social media accounts so what i will do is uh, i'm going to add that so let's go back and i'm going to add one more paragraph and inside the paragraph i'm going to use the bootstrap component list group so let's have the list group and i want the list group to be horizontal all right you can also use the vertical to have the list group vertical and i will have the list group item all right i will have an anchor tag href all right and then here i can write the youtube all right i will give the youtube link so i'm going to just copy two three and four uh, i will have the linkedin so let me change this to linkedin then i'm going to change this to instagram and the last one i will change this to twitter and we can give the links as well all right so now if i go here then we see that we have the links as well so uh, it's complaining me because we haven't given the, the links so let me give the link so i'm going to copy my social media links so this is my youtube link this is my linkedin this is my instagram and let's add the twitter as well so i'm going to copy this and i'm going to add the twitter as well all right i will save it and now let's go and check so now if we see then we have the all the pages are ready we can go to the home projects we can go to services about and we can go to the contact but now what we have to do is we have to add some animation to this and for that we are going to use the framer motion so now let's go to the official documentation of the framer motion and let's understand about the library so this is the official documentation and here you can do very cool animations so if i go to the motion then you will see that we have a different types of motions here so if we go here and we see that this is how we use a motion on a div element so this is a dev element and if i change the position of the x the box actually animates so this is how you can do it all right and we have a different types of animations uh, available so here is one of the animation and if you click on any of the grid then it will open in a modal all right so what we will do is i'm going to go to the api documentation and we have a different examples all right so we already installed the framer motion uh, as a dependency in our application code so what i will do is let's go here i'm going to increase the size of my browser and let's start with the home so for this first i have to add an animation on my text so this is the page malvia and the description so let's go back and what we have to do is we need also an animation on each of the route so for that we can make use of a component that is animate presence so if we go back here then there is a component called animate presence and this component is actually uh, helps to animate all the routes whenever we do a routing on the elements then we need to have an animation on each of the routes so what i will do is let's go to the app js and the first thing is let's import this animate route so i will go here and then i'm going to have the animate presence so let me have the animate presence component it's auto imported from the frame motion and i'm going to cut this and i will add it here all right i have that and the next thing is what i have to do is whenever uh, we are switching the route we need to make aware the animate presence that a route has been switched and we have to start the animation so for that what we have to do is to the routes uh, which is a replacement of a switch we need to tell them on which current route we are 
So what we will do is we can make use of a use location hook. So let's go and import the use location hook. So I'm going to go here. I will have the use location. All right. And then I'm going to go here. I will have a constant. I'm going to have a location variable. So let's have a location variable which will have the use location. All right. I will save it. Okay. And now if we go and if we check, then we see that our application is now broken. So if we go to the services, then we don't see anything or if we go to the about then we don't see anything so let's go and inspect what is the problem so if i inspect and if i go to the console then we see that uh, we have an error and the error is let me zoom a little bit the error is that use location may be used only in the context of router now the problem is that we have the router here but we have used the use location outside of the router so we can fix that we can move this router to our uh, index.js so if we go to the index.js then we can actually have the router here so what i will do is i'm going to have the import and i will have the import browser router as router all right and then i can wrap my app component with the router all right let me cut this and i will add it here and now what i will do is in my app i don't need the router anymore so i'm going to remove this and i will remove the router let me remove the router from here we don't need it and then what we can do is uh, i want this container to be part of this all right so let me have this all right but now we have multiple components returning so i can wrap this to an empty fragment all right so let me cut this and let me add the empty fragment in the end now everything works fine so let's go back and check I'm going to close this and if I go on the home then I see again my application is functional all right so now we have tackled that and what we want is that whenever we do the animation on any of the route so how it works that first there is an animation end and the new route will have the animation start so I have to give a property here which is the exit before animation uh, exit before enter all right i will save it and now what we can do is uh, we have to use this location in order to know that uh, on each of the route we have to do the animation so for that i will have a location prop i will pass the location and then i will have to pass the key for each of the route and that will be the location dot path name all right so we did the basic setup we haven't used the framer motion animate or anything right now we just use the animate presence component and now we have the setup now what we have to do is now we have to do the animation on each of the route component so let's start with the home component so i will go to the home component and in the home component what i will do is i'm going to import the motion so let me have the import motion from framer motion and the first thing i will do is i will animate the name so to animate the name what we can do is uh, i can use this motion on this div so i will have the motion dot div and then i will have to add this motion dot div and what animation i have to give is that i have to define the initial value of this div and the animated value of this div so let's add the initial value first so i need the initial value so this will be an object and here i can give the initial value that i need my x coordinate of this name to be at 300 position minus 300 position and along with that i also want a scale initial scale to be a 0.5 so i will have the 0.5 so this is the initial animation now what from the initial position where i have to reach is i have to do an animate and i have to define the final position so let me have the final position so the final position that i want my x to be at zero so i want my uh, name which is the page malvia to be on the position uh, where it is now and then i need my scale should be one so this should be one i will save it and now let's go and check so if i refresh my page then you will see that there is a fast animation on this name but i need some transition i don't want the animation to be fast so i can give a transition of the animation so let me give a transition property and then in the transition i can give the duration what is the duration of this animation so let's give it one so it's going to take at least one it's a millisecond or second or uh, whatever it is then it's going to take that duration to complete it now i also want to have an animation on my description so i can give a very similar animation so let me just copy this i will change this div to motion.dev and this will become motion.dev i have to give some animations so here i have minus 300 to 0 here i want to give 
300 to 0 and the duration is same so i will save it now let's go and check then you see that there is a smooth animation on my text so that's how the framer motion is it's very simple to use and we see that we get a warning of replace exit before enter with a mode is equals to wait so what we can do is uh, i mean we can remove that for now we don't want that so i will go to the app js and let's remove this and let's check that does our animation still works or not and i will refresh it and we see that animation is still work now this is one of the animation we have used for the framer motion where we have given the x and y so it's a part of the animation overview so you will find how you can give this different so if you see here if we change it then we see the animation all right now i'm going to give a animation on the page as well so whenever uh, i switch from home to projects i need a animation so what here i can do is i can go to the top level of the div which is this project and i can type the animation here so i will have the motion dot div let's import the motion so i'm going to have an import oops let me import it here on the top so i will have the import i will have the motion from the framer motion all right and this time we are going to do something different so what i will do is i'm going to copy this and let's add on the div uh, i will have the motion here and here what i want is uh, i want to give a animation of let's have the initial value or i don't need any initial value i just need to animate so you can also do the animation directly so what i will do here is that first i need to have a scale and here i'm going to give the three frames so if you know already about the css animation then you can also define the keyframes uh, based on the time what animation you want so uh, i'm going to have the scale two and one all right and then whenever i have the scale i also want to rotate so for that rotation i will have a 90 degree to zero degree and now i'm going to give a transition to finish this so let me have a transition property and i can have an object here where i can give the duration to finish this transition is 0.5 and i can also give the ease in and ease out so let me have the ease in out and i will save it so i have this and now let's go and let's check so if i go here if i refresh it then i have this animation if i go to the projects then you will see that now my projects is now having a different animation so it's rotating uh, a 90 degree and then it comes to its initial position we can also do how we can do the hover effect so if i go and go to on this div so let me have a motion dot div and i will close this uh, motion dot div i will also give a key uh, so that i have a unique key to each of the item and here on the motion what we have is we have one while on hover so these are the gestures so if we go to the uh, documentation and we see then we have gesture animation and this are like the uh, while hover while tap focus drag and in view so you can use different type and you can play around it i'm going to use here as while hover so let me have the while hover oops it should be hover and on while hover what i want to do is i will have an object uh, i need i have to scale this to 1.1 whenever i hover and i will give a transition to this so i have a transition and for the transition i'm going to give a duration of 0.5 i will save it all right let's go and check so if i go here if i refresh it then i have an animation and whenever i hover it you will see that we have a smooth uh, scale up of each of the project so this is the another animation on the services also we can give some other animation on the page so let's go and do on the services so we are just exploring what different kind of animation we can use with the help of the frame of motion so let's go here and i will have a very similar hover stuff so i'm just going to do a copy and paste of this so copy on the services let's go on here i will add it here all right and i'm going to use the motion here so let's have a motion so it's pretty simple and once you do it i mean you get used to it so let's import the motion i have the motion as well and what i want to do is that uh, whenever i switch to the page whenever i enter to the new route of the services uh, i need to have some kind of an animation so this is the div so what i will do is i will just wrap this to a new div so i will have a motion dot div where i'm going to give a animation effect so i'm going to cut this let me add in the end and then here what i will do is uh, i will have an initial value so what i want that initially i want my page scaling y 
to be zero and then i have to do an animate and i will animate this to uh, scale y to one and i also want that whenever i exit from this page my scale should be zero it will be like i, I mean it will first do a scale of zero then it will go to its actual value and whenever we exit it it will again do the animation on the scale y as zero so let's have an exit as well so we can also give an exit that whenever we exit the page or whenever we transition from one page to another we have to give some kind of an animation there as well so i'm going to have the scale uh, y and let's have the scale y to zero all right let's go and let's test it so i am on the projects now first home projects and i'm going to go to the service so now you will see that when i go to the service it actually opens up so if i increase the duration then you will see a little bit better so i have a duration sorry i need to give a transition so let's have a transition and for the transition i have a duration property and i'm going to give the duration as one so that we can see all right let's go back and here if i click on it then you will see that it's a very slow transition uh, even though we don't need any duration because we want this to be very quick so let's have a point two all right i will go to the about and when i click on the services you will see that the initial scale of y is zero then it comes to the one so that's why it opens up and when i click on the about it's going to close down so this is how it's going to close down so that's where the exit works so whenever you want to exit go to the new route you need to have a scale y of zero on the about i need to show you some a different kind of animation specially related to the scroll so whenever you have a scroll on the page you need an progress bar which will be animated uh, based on your scroll so let's do that so if i go to the documentation you have a scroll option and here you will see that we have a very similar kind of stuff whenever i'm scrolling you will see that we have a progress bar actually on the top so this is also a very cool uh, animation on the website so let's go and try that so i'm going to go to the about and on the about uh, i'm going to import let's import the motion so import motion i will need the motion i will also need a use scroll hook so let's have the use scroll and i will use the use spring hook all right i will save it and then here what i will do is i'm going to have a constant and i will have the scroll by progress and this will be equals to the use scroll and then what i have to do is uh, on the y axis which is the my progress bar so i will do the constant and uh, scale y sorry on the x axis where i have the progress bar so for that i will have the scale x and i will make use of a use spring and then let's have the scroll y progress and then i can give some additional properties so i will have the stiffness of 100 damping of 30 so these are different properties uh, you can check each of the property and then you can play around uh, what property you need to give so it offers a lot of different properties uh, you can use this and then what we can do is uh, let's go down and here uh, i'm going to create a progress bar so let's have an empty fragment first i will cut to this I'm going to have an empty fragment and then I will add it here and then what I will do is uh, I'm going to create a motion div and then I'm going to have a style to that motion div so let me have the style and I'm going to give the style for the scale x so this scale x will be my progress bar so let me have the scale x and I will give the scroll y progress all right I have given the style and I also need to create a progress bar so for that I'm going to have a class name of progress uh, progress bar animate all right i will save it and you will see that for the progress bar animate in my css i have already created a progress bar so let's go and see where is the progress bar so here is the progress bar which i have created i have given a position fix top right height of the progress bar and then the background color and transform and then the z index property since i given the z index property because my header is also on a fixed position so now let's go and let's test it so if i go back here i refresh it and if i scroll down then you will see that we have a beautiful progress bar on the top that actually based on our scroll so here you have different variants of it so if we go down then you will see that we have a page scroll progress which is a simple page scroll progress and you need a spring smoothing i mean it, it is more smooth animation then in that case you can use this one all right so you have that and then in the last let's have some on the contacts uh, page as well so let's go to the contact and on the contact what we will do is we are going to give a very similar animation which we used for the services uh, page so i'm going to copy this 
and then let's go to the contact and on the contact uh, let's add it here so i'm going to copy and i'm going to add it here uh, i will also have to give the class name again so let's have the class name of contact all right i have to close the motion div so i will close the motion div and i will save it all right i get an error because we haven't defined the motion so let's import the motion so i will have the import motion oops motion from the framer motion all right i will save it and now let's go and check so if i go here if i refresh my page and if i go to the context then you will see that we have a scale of 0 to 1 and then when we go back to other component then the egg on the exit also we need the scale y to be 0 so that's how the animation works so this is the complete animation uh, we have explored the framer motion library so if we go on the home we see the animation on the content and then if we go on the projects we see a different kind of an animation for services we have the gesture on hover we have some cool animation on about we are using the scroll animation where we have a progress bar on the scroll and then we have a contact we can actually explore some more animations so let's see this is the link work or not so if i click on it then we see that we are actually going to the my youtube page all right so this is how uh we can use the framer motion react router dome version 6 and react bootstrap and we create a portfolio website so it's not much fancy but the idea here is to learn about the animations in the react application or the react websites so that's all i have in this video uh, i hope you like the video a thumbs up is appreciated you can also connect with me via facebook or instagram you can follow me on twitter for latest updates and before you go don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one thank you thanks for watching